is us going out of stock and selling out a PR stunt? Well, yes. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. No, sorry, I, I actually like, the reason I'm joking about it is because I kind of wish it was a PR stunt because that's what everybody seems to think, like the system is rigged. And it's like, no honey, I just cannot keep up with the demand and I'm also a bootstrapped company that is self-funded and self-profitable and I have to consider the bigger picture. My name is Chrissy Cella. This is my story and how I founded Honor Active. I'm gonna be taking you through the highs, the lows, and complete transparency. Because you are the reason Honor Active even exists. You are the reason I am here today sharing my story on this platform. I wanna take you through absolutely everything. So from a consumer standpoint, right, you see numbers, you see someone with a platform that has 3 million, 4 million followers combined across platforms, you see a really, really engaged, loving community, and you assume that that's gonna automatically convey conversions, right? And the truth of the matter is that's not how it works. The way it works is you need to start small, you need to build data, you need to hire the relevant people, you need to assess the relevant critical risks, you need to also assess how long things are gonna take you to make. Our whole concept is to make everybody honor their body and feel extraordinary. By me restricting stock like so many people think i'm shooting myself in the foot because i'm also not fulfilling my core value and that is for everybody to be able to wear honor whether that's through the effortless collection the classic collection new styles launching i want to make this a huge company that stands the test of time and if i don't have enough stock i'm not going to get there but these things take time and i think a lot of people forget making this video here today we are one and a half years old we have seen growth that i absolutely never expected the target figure that we have this year was actually a projection for three four years and we've done it in two years well a year and a half so because we're not a fast fashion brand and because we actually value being ethical we value working with suppliers and manufacturers that we have complete like criterias, assessment. They're not just gonna produce something quick because you demand it and you decide to place an order. So you have to create a critical path. So when we sit our suppliers down, you know, first of all, you need to build a relationship because if your supplier does not believe in your vision and does not like you as an individual, they will put you in the back of the list. Suppliers don't need you, you need suppliers. Always remember that. So if you're difficult, if you disapprove stock, if you are hard to work with, they will put you in the back of the queue and you will not get your stock, even if it's like 10 units, which just saying metaphor, you won't get that for a year because there'll always be something that's going wrong. Nothing goes wrong, they just don't wanna cater for you. So in this situation, I've spent a year and a half building my relationship with my suppliers. I go to my suppliers, I sit with them, I take them out for dinner, I ask them how they are because they're human beings at the end of the day they don't just work for you they work with you right so now i can speed up the process in a positive way that's not going to affect how people are treated in the manufacturing it's not going to affect any of the quality but they're just going to consider you a bit more and that takes time right relationship building takes time on average a restock could take up to four to five months, depending on how strong your relationship is. We're trying to cut it down uh, because we're forecasting, so we're giving them a prediction of what we require. We're giving them colors that we want so we can approve lab dips in time um, and we can be ahead of the game. So essentially, restocks are just happening whilst new stuff is being launched we didn't realize the hype of let's say effortless i didn't realize that this legging would be such a hype this year nor does a supplier we didn't forecast it because we assumed looking at the data of classic 
that we would be okay. So I need time. I now know what kind of leggings our community like and what kind of leggings they maybe don't like. I know what they are looking for and I know maybe what they're not looking for. So I can better estimate, better forecast and better plan. Look, like when I first started on Active, I was super naive. I was like, okay, we have cash, put it in stock. You have cash, put it in stock. Constantly have stock, 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 stock. Because we're bootstrapped, we invest all our cash back into the company and not just in stock. You have to consider the following when you're building a collection. How much does yarn cost? How much does ethical labor cost? Do suppliers only work with strict payment terms? When will you make the upfront cost you paid through warehouse, logistics and shipment paid back into the brand in full? Companies do not make any money until consumers make the official purchase and then the money hits the bank account. So I now need to calculate how we're gonna stay cash positive to pay salaries, to grow the brand, to hire more people, to give the opportunity for teammates and athletes to make an income and a set salary so they don't have to go work at a job they don't like and they can focus on being content creators and inspiring figures for our community, to purchase a bigger office, to potentially have a bigger production site so we're not paying an arm and a leg on fees on other third parties producing having production sites and we can create that ourselves so it's not just about stock i have to think about the bigger picture it goes so much deeper than just buying items just to not be out of stock i would actually rather be a little bit out of stock and have less stock so long as i know that i'm putting money into development for my team getting more employees to help my team because right now there is not many of us and we're handling big projects and we can be a, it can be a bit overwhelming. I need to place budgets in place, right? And I, t I need to really consider the whole picture. Stock is literally one side of things. I have to consider the growth plan, marketing plan, affiliations and sponsorships, teams, employee happiness, HR, like there's a lot more to consider. And I think that it's very simple and I understand so much that the community gets so frustrated because how can you not get frustrated? You want something, you're not able to get it. And then on top of all of that, you keep restocking and you're still not getting it. And it's almost like you lose hope in the company. And then it makes me feel sad because I'm like, no, honestly, I want nothing more than you to have this product because it helps us anyway, you, you purchasing into this brand. But it just takes time. And there's gonna come a time where there'll probably be too many effortless leggings and you, wouldn't, you won't even know what color you want. So we just need time. Look, like I can only base how well a launch will do on the community's reactions. And you know, when I kind of tease something and I see how they react, um, but I can't anticipate, like sometimes I'll launch a color and I'll be like, I'm so sure the community will love this. And it's our worst selling color. Uh, and then there'll be like a random thing that everybody loves and I'm like, oh, that's really confused me. I didn't realize that the long sleeve t-shirts would actually do better than the tank tops, you know? I sometimes have a gut feeling, my gut feeling is bright, but sometimes I completely miss the mark and I'm like, oh, right. So I kind of just created a product that I like and nobody else actually liked. So I think it's really hard and I think that's where merchandising comes in and a merchandiser will look at the bigger picture and they will tell you actually light colors don't perform as as good as dark colors, maybe reconsider stripping these colors back and reintroducing a darker set of colors because women feel more confident in darker colors. Like I said, you are working with people that know things better than you do. And if you don't work with people that know things better than you do, then you're always gonna make the wrong decision. On launch days, I used to feel super excited and I used to feel like buzzing. So I was like, can't wait, like this is so exciting. Four, three, two, one. Uh, we just launched, whilst we're working on our effortless collection, we launched our new summer colors. And Afterwards, because things sell out and because things are just like, you know, on edge, I just don't feel as excited as I used to because I don't want anyone to be frustrated. I don't want anyone to be disappointed. I don't want anyone to think 
that this is being done on purpose. I don't want people to think like that. I want people to understand that we're trying, give us time, and we see and hear your frustration. And that's why we haven't launched a million and one different products. We have stayed with the same products, just launched different colors, so we offer something for everybody, and we keep restocking. Like, we're not launching random collections here and there. We literally keep restocking the same thing. But how can you think <coughs> things are done with so much malice? Yeah. And like, how can you think like that I would just never think to do what they've said I would do, to cause frenzy, than to make more? If I wanted to make more, we would have the products that we've declined and declined and declined and declined and made more. Honestly, had we just known, in, like, had, had the social and myself known that how logistics truly works is you have different sites and they are allocated different amounts, because I didn't even know this, that they were allocated mm -hmm. different amounts, mm -hmm. and uh, that the way it works is if one area is sold out, then one could still have stock. So I think that's why we have to always say US still has stock or UK still has stock. I think feedback is absolutely always welcomed and like, you know, our internal policy is really open as well as a team. We always ask for each other's feedback. We're very vocal, very honest with each other. So that's kind of how I've built my community as well and how we're building the honor active community. But there's a really big difference in projecting your frustration to being just really harsh. And I think I'm not gonna sit there and be apologetic as a brand because we don't have enough stock. Accusing a brand of something that it's not done and projecting your frustration as aggression, I don't tolerate that. And I don't accept that because the bottom line is we are an ethical and we are a good brand. We haven't done anything wrong. And every time we have messed up, let's say deliveries or not having enough stock, we tell you and we have an open conversation with you. Regardless if we're 10 years or 20 years old, you have to allow brands to make mistakes. You have to allow people to make mistakes because if you as an individual started something a year and a half ago and you made mistakes along the way, you would want to be given the benefit of the doubt. So long as you just kept transparency and you just kept honesty. And I think that sometimes we have to look at the bigger picture and we have to look at all the great things that Honor have, has done as well in such a short space of time. And I understand the frustration because I want no one, nothing more than to see everybody in Honor. But understand, we know, like we're not naive, we know. And we're working on it. But just give us grace and give us time because the best things happen when time is provided and, and when people are supportive, you know?